All right, right here I'm holding a, a lot of Fury in my hands. This is the uh, the R9 Fury from AMD, and this is the Sapphire Tri-X version with the gigantic cooling unit. Look at that freaking cooling unit. Now, here's the size of the card right there. It's nice and small thanks to the high bandwidth memory that's super fast stacked memory. Memory bitwidth is 4096 as opposed to 512 on the R9 290X. And uh, it, the, the NVIDIA cards are nowhere near this bit, this bit width. Listen up, bit width. So anyway, this card has extremely fast memory. That's one of the things that make it uh, a little different. Now, this one from Sapphire is a little different because this huge cooling unit. So the Fury X, right? This is sort of like the, the maybe not really a kid brother, but just like the uh, slightly smaller brother of the Fury X. And it, the Fury X has water cooling. This one, well, water cooling would be nice, but Sapphire is like, no, let's just make a, a regular, this is sort of a normal size card. It's like just a little bit over a foot long, about 31, 32 centimeters long. And um, they put this gigantic cooling unit on it with tons of fins. Now, if we take the cooling unit off and you want to see what's going on under the hood to see how everything looks, we can do that. So you see the core there and just to the right of the core, you have all of the high bandwidth memory and it's stacked memory. Whereas on a regular card, you'd have to have tons of memory laid out in all different, you know, all, all, all kinds of places. So you just almost all the way around the core, you'd have memory. Whereas this one, it's all on the right and it makes the card uh, quite a bit smaller. And then on the top here, you can see we have two 8-pin power connectors. It was full system that we had for benchmarks was only pulling about 400 watts. So not too bad there. As far as the, um, as far as the temperatures go, this card was at around 65 to 67 degrees um, at the, the, the factory clock. Um, we're running it at 1,000, not 1040, but just because just you know, the regular version is going to be 1,000. So I wanted to test that out. Um, and then with our overclock, it was getting around 69 or 70 degrees. We overclocked it to 1133. So there's that. Let's go ahead and talk about the specifications of this card in relation to the um, the bigger Fury X stream processors. Fury uh, the, the Fury X had 4,096. This one has 3,584, so slightly more than 500 fewer right there. The compute units, 56 on this one. Render output units, 128. And texture mapping units, 224. We'll specialized specialized stuff there now uh, this one is uh, 1040 i'm going to do my tests at a thousand megahertz just because that's the the regular one and i want you guys to see what the regular performance is and we'll do an overclocked benchmark probably tomorrow so stay tuned for that um the memory frequency on this is 500 megahertz and the memory uh the freaking memory interface is 4096 bit ridiculous um, 512 gigabytes per second on the memory bandwidth and uh, 7.2 teraflops. 8.6 was the, uh, I guess that's what the, the Fury X could do. So pretty ridiculous here. The, 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 they say it's about 275 with our overclock. We were around 300 watts as far as the power draw goes. But yeah, about 275 on the, on the power there. And uh, yeah, let's take a look at the front here. We've got our ports. We have three DisplayPort 1.2As right there in the front. And those do support uh, FreeSync, which is where they can you know, match the frequency of your monitor with the FPS of your game to give you a nice smooth gameplay. And then over here, that is um, HDMI 1.4. That supports 4K, but only at 30 Hertz. So AMD, please start putting 2.0 uh, on your cards. These three are gonna do just fine. Uh, for you know 60 hertz at 4k gaming if you if you want to but not that one so you got three options if you want to run a fourth 4k monitor at 60 hertz nah can't do it use that one for 1440 or 1080p or something all right uh, this one does have a back plate and um you guys can see it there i think it's got a decent aesthetic to it but uh, you know it's up to you whatever you think of the back plate it's, it's whatever you whatever you want in your own happy little world here's the card so this one's priced very similar to the gtx 980 from nvidia um, tomorrow we're going to put this one against one of the best 980s and overclock them both as much as we can and do a benchmark. Today I'm just going to do this one benchmarked at 1000 megahertz to, you know, give you an idea of what we're looking at. So, opening up the benchmarks here, running the card at 1000 megahertz. We started off running Valley at uh, 4K, and you can see there the average, uh, not so hot. So, Valley was kind of, uh, I think it's a lot of the filters we had turned on, the anti-aliasing and stuff really killed it. Uh, however, at 1080p, no problem at all. Uh, there was a little bit of a, a coil whine I started hearing, and that was mainly in the menu, because when the menu comes up, it starts running at like 2,000 FPS. So when you have really, really high FPS, I noticed a coil whine, but it has to be a very high FPS. Uh, sometimes once I get over 100, I noticed a slight hum on the test bench. Once you put it in a case, probably won't hear that, but I did hear it. They said it might be just because it's a production sample, but I want to make sure you guys knew that I heard some coil whine at high FPS. Bioshock running at 4K, no problem whatsoever, and 1080p, totally handling it just fine. 
Uh, you can play a lot of games at 4K. And this, I also want to note that it did not drop below uh, 38, so that's a nice smooth gameplay there. Now, Thief. We tested that with DirectX 11 and also Mantle. Uh, and as you can see there at, uh, you know, 4K and at um, 1080p, it did okay, except for 4K, it, the, some, there's some point in there where it just drops down, like takes a huge uh, hit. So something's going on there in 4K, maybe some when the memory is, I don't know, maybe it needs more memory or something like that. It's probably, probably the thing. I mean, it's got really fast memory, but only four gigabytes of memory. So 4K, you might every once in a while see a drop like that. And then uh, take a look at Mantle there. We actually have substantially better performance. 1080p, 12 FPS, so actually a little bit more than that. So really nice performance with Mantle there. What I'm hoping is that Mantle is very similar to DirectX 12, or I should say DirectX 12 is similar to Mantle. So I'm hoping that the story does not end with the first couple of videos. I'm hoping that as the drivers mature and that as we see some games start supporting DirectX 12, I'm hoping that this card will all of a sudden become faster. That's what I hope. Can't guarantee it, but that's that would be really, really cool. Uh, Ethan Carter, I wanted to test that out because it's an Unreal Engine game that's very pretty. 1080 and uh, and 4K, no problems whatsoever. So Trine 3 is out, and I'm gonna use that to talk about their virtual super resolution. And what that allows you to do is, let's say you have like a 1080p monitor or a 1440p monitor. This card can just completely, that means 1440p and 1080p, is kind of, that's kind of easy mode for most games. So what you can do, instead of running a ton of filters, because filters make things, I mean, they make it, make it look maybe maybe better, but it's always better to run at higher resolution. So what they'll let you do is let you run it at 4K or 5K on a 1440p monitor, then you can downsample. And running 4K downsample to 1080p looks much crisper than just running 1080p with a bunch of filters. And so here's what we did. We tested out Trine on 1080p with all the filters set to max. And as you can see there, we got 68.6 FPS um, average. Then 4K with medium filters looked way sharper, like night and day sharper. But even though we're only using medium filters, you could probably turn off the filters and it would still look sharper. And the FPS was 68.16. So virtually the same score running at 4K without, with medium filters versus, you know, 1080p with all the filters. So pretty big difference there. Lastly, we tested the Witcher, the Witcher 3 that is. We ran this completely maxed out, by the way. 4K, almost playable. Like, really, really uh, nice frame times on this one. I want, I want to point out, like, 28 was the, the 28 was the max, but 27 was the minimum. So it's a really smooth game. You turn off a few things, and you'll be able to play this at 4K, at, you know, 40 FPS, and you'll be just fine. At uh, 1080p, it's also quite playable. And again, I would probably turn off some filters and play it at 4K, uh, and be happy. I think the real question is going to be uh, this, you know, versus the competition which is the really the 980 is the, is the main competitor to this card and it's a very similar price point and then and then the full story is going to be how is it going to work with DirectX 12 are we going to see a jump uh, are the drivers going to become more mature because this is a you know something new here it's it's you know it's Fiji uh, so it's a it's a different architecture for them even though it's based on the same manufacturing process so i think that i'm going to wait and watch and hope and i think that it's going to just keep getting better as it stands right now, it, it does um, pretty much exactly what I expected for the money. So it's a good price point on this one as well. We will test this against the 980. We're going to do a few more benchmarks and try to get that video to you guys tomorrow. So watch the main channel for that one. Should be a pretty epic battle. And I'm also going to overclock the hell out of this thing and the 980. I'm going to overclock both of them and just see which one wins. So stay tuned for that video and uh, let us know what you think in the comments. Uh, I'm always curious to know what you guys think of this card and uh you know the benchmarks and everything so see you in the comments also if you guys want to know the specs for the the rig that we benchmarked and if you want to download a zip file with all the benchmarks in it you know like even the frame times and everything if you really want to take a look at all that stuff we're going to throw it on the website so just click on the link in the you know top of the description another thing that's going to be there is uh you know the price and availability of these guys you guys will have a, a link there oh lastly uh I was talking to ed from sapphire he did say that they were giving one of these away so i'm going to throw that link in the description as well if you guys want a chance to win one of these, it's all there. So we see you guys in the comments and on the website, and best of luck in winning one of these, and yeah, that's the end of things. Salutations.